A tear with near 15 centimeters near the center of this painting probably made by accident by pressure against some other object and also a damage in the frame in this video you will watch the complete process of conservation and restoration of this painting you will watch all the steps about turning this into this so I invite you to follow me in this day at the sea in my analysis I came to the conclusion that the frame also has a small ornament that it is broken and to have a better access to the painting I do have to take it out of the frame this painting is attached to the frame with several nails that I have to cut so I make sure the painting is totally free and there are no more nails holding it to the frame The first steps that I'm going to take make part of the conservation. With this I mean that I'm going to take care of the first actions in order to stabilize this painting. In what concerns to the structure of the painting, the stretching frame is in good condition and the canvas is well nailed to the stretching frame and also in good condition so there is no need to disassemble the canvas from the stretching frame in this situation the priority is the stabilization and consolidation of the big tear in the central area from the painting and for that I need to make a deeper analysis using a magnifier glass. With this I can see much better the damage the tear have done to the painting. I can notice that the canvas and the paint do not overlap each other what is very good and make my intervention easier and less invasive otherwise I would have to make some adaptations on the canvas to avoid this situation but I also notice that I need to consolidate the paint along the tear. If I do not do this with my manipulation, it can result in paint loss. So to make sure the paint remains in its place I will use a glue solution that I make with some fish gelatin glue in a very low concentration and I do apply this glue in the old tear in the front and in the back of the canvas.
Before joining the stair, it is necessary that the canvas is completely at the same level. As you can see from the image, at this moment there are parts of the canvas that are higher than others, and this has to be corrected. After thinking about what would be the best way to achieve this, I concluded that in this situation I will follow what I imagined in several layers. So in this process of layers I start with the table, I put the layer of Melinex, then I lay down the painting over this layer, a layer of blotting paper, and another layer of Melinex. Over this layer I put a piece of wood and over this piece of wood making pressure I put a heavy weight. So I start by laying down this piece of wood that I am sure is totally flat. I do apply this layer of Melinex and I lay down the painting over this layer. This layer is to protect the painting. I make sure uh, the paint is and the canvas is totally flat and I'm going to put over the canvas a piece of blotting paper that I do apply with a little bit of moist but very very soft so I will adapt this blotting paper over the canvas Over this blotting paper I will lay down another layer of Melinex and this Melinex will prevent the moist that is in the blotting paper from evaporate too quickly. Over the Melinex I lay down a piece of wood which will distribute the pressure more evenly. This pressure is given by the various weights that I put on top. This will help the canvas to be more flat, becoming ready to receive the following treatments. I will have to leave the painting like this for about two or three days. Three days did pass, so it is possible to advance to the next procedures. So I start by disassembling the several layers that I did put, the weights, the wood, the Melinex and the paper. And I can tell that I am very glad with the result because the canvas is totally flat, the join is very very together and doesn't overlap at all, so the result is very very good. To consolidate the tear, I'm going to use a thermoplastic resin called Polyamide Textile. It has a very high tensile strength. This is a powder that first I do apply in 3 or 4 points, only to be sure the tear remains in place. And with a hot iron, I do apply heat. The polyamide powder will melt and the coat that forms gives the guarantee that the tear is closed. 
Then I will apply along all the tear. I do protect the iron and also the painting from the heat with a piece of vegetable paper. Looking against some light, I confirm that the tear is well unified and there are small holes that have to be closed but with another technique. And you probably noticed that I did apply polyamide textile a little bit over the tear. And that is because in this canvas there is an indication that the tear could grow. So I apply the polyamide in that direction in order to reinforce the canvas on that area and also to prevent future accidents. And here you watch me cutting canvas threads in powder that I will mix with an adhesive to make the filling I use to close the small holes that are in the canvas. I do work with a lot of gels, so for me it makes sense to have a hot magnetic mixing plate. So in the future you will watch me preparing several gels with the help of this little friend here. So I put the mixing cup and I add the magnet. I add the water and after the water I add the PVA the magnetic inside will spin according with the instruction that I give and also by the action of the heat it will melt and it will mix. When ready, I can keep it in a small jar for any future use.
I can mix now the adhesive with the powder and I can apply in the holes. Once the consolidation of the camp is done, I can finally start with the cleaning of the painting. And this is a little bit of surprise because the sky is much more blue than I thought that would be. When I have the painting free from the dirt, my access to the old varnish is so much easier. Taking the varnish out from this boat is an action that requires a lot of attention. There are some beautiful lines as ropes that I want to make sure they stay and not go away with my cleaning. So, my attention now is double. And what a difference. The painting is clean, does not have that yellow varnish anymore, and the colors are again alive. The painting is ready to receive the filling in the tear area.
I can remove the excess of the filling using my fingertips. Not only I can see with my eyes, but I can also feel with my fingertips. When the same level is achieved between the tear and the canvas. With a swab, I will clean the powder residues. I apply a varnish that separates the paint layer from my retouching. And I'm using here a varnish that I make myself with a resin and two different solvents. This varnish not only will protect the painting, but also will bring more deepness to the colors on the paint. Helping me to get the best color when I am doing the retouch. I do work with several palettes, but the area where the tear is in this painting is where the sky is blue with several clouds. But in this area, not only the blue exists, but several in different tones of grey. So I will start for making several tones of grey, and I keep aside a little bit of blue in case I need to mix and all of these in a small palette that I specially create for this painting. When the retouching is finished, I can apply the final varnish. This will unify the painting. Although I mix the restoration paint with a varnish, 
when I do apply it on the painting, they still a bit matte, not shining that much. And this happens because this paint does not have oil on its composition. This final varnish will help to achieve a uniform and a shining with more harmony between the colors. This varnish will have to dry for several hours, so I can apply this time on the restoration of the frame. This beautiful frame is gold gilded with gold leaf. But the ornaments on the corners of the frame are painted with gold powder in a solvent, glue or varnish. In my analysis, it is important to be sure which materials I can use for this conservation. And I noticed that the ornaments are made using hard gesso. So I will use the same technique. I do a mix with gesso, water and protein glue or bone glue. I have to keep this protein glue in Bain Marie. This way I can work with it longer because it remains warm and liquid. This protein glue makes the gesso when it is dry extremely hard and resistant. In the place of the missing or broken ornament, I do apply some water. This will help to make some glue with some gesso residues that are present on the frame. This moist also help to better receive the new gesso paste I did prepare. I use my fingers to shape the paste in the best format to match the missing ornament. And with a brush I also try to shape as close as possible. It is important that I apply a ground layer so it can better receive the future golden paint. I am applying here first a red and over this layer I will apply later a more deep red. To prepare this golden color, I do use this golden mica powder that I mix with other resin. Over this golden new ornament, I will apply another translucent brown varnish. 
in order to achieve the closest color as possible. The frame needed an intervention. A small detail in an ornament was broken. After several restoration procedures, we do have this beautiful frame together again. But the initial big tear, that was the main issue to be restored. The painting is now totally stable and now can meet its frame again. Both painting and frame are now one piece of art that can be admired as when the artist painted it. Without the yellow varnish, the sky looks so blue. We can see now these two fishermen that are pulling a net. The horizon is full of other small boats. And we can notice better this castle in the landscape. If you would like to watch more content like this in the future, consider to subscribe to this channel. I suggest you to watch next this video here. Thank you for watching. I meet you again on the next video.